What's up, buddy? This is another video um, that's not related to Libra fighting or survival tactics or anything like that. This is more about inner work, and I think it's just as important as working on our external tools. We have to work on our inner being, inner soul. We have to go work on that because if you don't, like like Sun Tzu said, victorious soldiers win first they're they're victorious first then they go into bad battle and then they win and defeated soldiers that go into battle may or may not win because they may acquire those things so you want to win first before you go into battle right now i'm going to battle just like y'all battle the new day all right what we're talking about today is called the hero's journey now you may have heard of this concept before may or not but this is my take on it. I personally am an empath. I like to help people. I like, just like what I'm doing right now, I like to do this. I like to give guidance and help people get out of messy, fucked up situations or even just, you know, reach their full potential and, and, and become who they're meant to be, their best versions of themselves, just like so many others. Um, however, um, I got hurt because I gave a lot. Um, to the wrong people who just took and took took from me and I got fucked up I got really really fucked up and I thought well you know the more you give the more you got like 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 it was like it was a flawed thinking they could just keep on giving to, to the wrong people and be okay it turns out it's really not and the the, the background common sense uh, wasn't loud enough for me until I finally um, splat hit the ground and and saw the effect of giving too much and not putting it in yourself so I got trapped by narcissists, narcs, and I, I like to call them. And this is not a victim thing here because ultimately I really feel bad for the narcs because what's really going on is that they are the victims in any narc kind of codependent situation because they've been hurt before. And somehow that trauma affected the parts of their brain, like the front of, I'm not a brain specialist, but I understand that the parts of their brain got damaged and they can't feel empathy for someone else. They only uh, remember um, themselves. They don't feel your pain. So let's say if you help a narc and they feel good, they'll pretend to love you and then They'll forget about you, like, and they'll use you up. And as soon as you become, uh, let's say, expired or you meet their expectation, you, you you finished your job for them. They'll flip on you. The RAS, uh, the RAS, our reticular activation system. The the mental focus will see only your negative traits once you fulfilled your role. It's kind of like similar, uh, you find a whore and you're like, oh my god, look at this, look at that ass, and then you go fuck, and then afterwards you're like, oh my god, what the fuck was I thinking? Like, please leave. Here's your money. Please leave. Because your, your reticulation act, activation system flipped. At first, you were seeing the positive, the, only the positive traits of that uh, prostitute. And after it's, it was over, you only saw the negative. You saw a used up person that was fucked up and all that. But even though they're both, they're both. They're not just bad or they're good or both. And so the narcs look at you in that way. So when they, when a person becomes a narcissist and they live like that for a long time and they just use people and throw them away, use people and throw them away. First of all, they can't handle isolation very well and they can't handle um, life very well because they can't feel anything. They can't feel nothing. Life becomes meaningless. It's just this materialistic external void of a fucking acquiring shit and pleasure and all this stuff. And it's meaningless and they, they end up dying very painfully. Um, me being a, a retarded empath, I feel like the more I give, I was alive in those moments, but then being hurt and and, and forgotten about or whatever um, left me in a position that was severely disadvantaged. Like in this past couple of years, I got really hurt by several people. I was trying to open a gym in Bangkok and it totally went down when my buddy at the time broke my hand and um, I really got, and I was giving so much to this gym and it was just all gone, all gone. Like, it was like he didn't just break my hand, like my wrist, he broke my heart and that shit, really fucking hurt or my parents like they fucking abandoned me my, my daughter was born and she was paralyzed or my 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 wife like she wouldn't change her ways of like you know she's like i feel i gave her so much and i fulfilled every expectation and then at the end their their ras flipped on me and they only see the bad traits of me even though i'm both just like the whore i'm both i'm also good and bad just like you 
But the point here is not to blame the narcs. That's what I'm not here for. This channel is about survival. It's about fucking getting better. It's about thriving, you know? We're not trying to blame people. And you, you don't get anywhere by blaming people. That's not the point here. The point here is what the fuck do we do? First of all, we don't try to be like that. We don't try to use people just solely to our means. We have to get to a win-win perspective. A narc, a narcissist, will only look at a win-lose scenario as the default. We're trying to look at the win-win. We don't want to be only trapped with our own concern because win-lose scenarios where, where you're only winning and they're losing, it doesn't go on very, very long. You want to usually, as much as you can, try to come up to a win-win kind of situation because those things are much more sustainable. So if you're helping someone, do expect to get some back. Do expect to get something back. You got to be able to set boundaries. This is where I'm at. Now, I know some of y'all may be able to... For me, this is challenging. So I'm going to set boundaries. You got to stop spending time with the wrong people and investing in the people that don't return. So you got to be able to invest in yourself so that you don't become like them. Ironically, you know, that the, the narcissist appears to be a, a person that's only fascinated or investing in themselves, but really they're not. They're not. They're just trying to fill a, like a gaping black hole that just never fills. And then comes the hero's journey, which I'm on right now. And that's where you go towards your fear. My fears are right now being left alone, forgotten, isolated, um, failure, all these lovely fears, right? And, and I use them and I go towards the cold. You want to go towards the fear. You want to go towards the pain. You don't want to turn away from it. You want to go towards it to understand and stay with it and accept it. That's how you can grow with it. And then at the same time, you got to have something to look forward to. You got to have a desire to keep living. Now, you have to invest in yourself. First of all, health, wealth, love, and happiness, right? First of all, most, I'm fasting all the time. Like, uh, I started with uh, eating, like, let's say, uh, on Sundays. Now I eat, like, two, three times a week. And the thing is, I'm, I'm losing weight. I lost about 20, click, 20 ki kilograms and all this stuff. And I'm, and I'm getting leaner and leaner and leaner. And I train every day. I go to the gym every day, once or twice a day. And if I can't go to the gym, say that the timing is such that I can't go to the gym, then I will um, do burpees on the floor, uh, push-ups, watch pauses, stuff as much as I can. And I, I'm not going to sound perfect. The negativity gets to me. I'm naturally a negative person. Um, so I have to work on earning my confidence for that day and when i don't that day usually turns pretty hardcore like it's very difficult as my mind tries to turn it into a negative spin into a negative situation that's hopeless as you go and defeat your fear and you meet death um you will acquire a new ability <laughs> that's the hero's journey now in this case might be tolerance of such situations creativity um uh, and another perspective of the world uh, a new approach to an old problem uh or a, a reinvigoration of your spirit um all kinds of good things can happen of course bad things can also happen when you go on the hero's journey you may not come back yeah you may go there and become the villain. You may go there and become a, tyrann a tyrannical bad person and come back and hurt your loved ones, hurt your people, and, 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 and end up doing far more damage than, uh, than you ever imagined. And that's exactly what the narcs want you to do. Because the narcs, you know, if you want to think in spiritual Christian kind of terms, I believe have been taken by Satan. The devil has corrupted their souls and they've been transformed from their God, children of God into pawns of Satan and they're no longer um, alive inside. They no longer have that soul and that's why when you look in their eyes, they're dead inside because they've lost contact and communion with God and you have to maintain that communion with God. You have to pray to Jesus Christ. You have to accept Him as your Lord and Savior. Now, I don't care if you're offended. I don't care. It's what worked for me. And if you find your way, good. But you got to get away because the devil is there. It's really real. And once it took my parents, my wife, um, it's trying to take me. Um, to. They want you to commit some sort of heinous act, some sort of reaction. So they can kind of say, ah, you're just like us. You're, you're nothing. You're not better than us. And also use that against you to demolish you from your innocence of being God's children. They take away your inner child and you become this demon. And you don't want that. You don't want that. 
Conscious, congruent living brings clarity to confusion. What that really means is that your heart, your mind, your soul, if they're congruent in the vision that has been supplied to you from above, you will finally make your life right. And when your, li when your heart is right, your life is right. And that is the key. That is the only place. Now, of course, it's, it's elusive and it's, it can be kind of, um, especially if you're in a very negative state like I am right now, it can really fluctuate when you can feel that right vision and you're going in the right direction versus um, being, you know, overtaken by negativity for which you have to uh, pump yourself out of that frequency, whether it's through exercise, breathing, um, appreciation of, of, you know, visualizing the positive things that you're trying to go towards and, and, and not hurting your people and not causing more pain while you're trying to find the answer. These are keys. So let's go over again. Uh, a lot of people are hurt and they're also um, taken over by the devil. So they don't try to change them. You cannot. You can only be an example of what it means to be God's children and, and to be waiting for the kingdom of heaven to come. You can only be an example. You can only be that person that you're um, preaching because preaching alone is nothing. You have to be the example. That's the only way you can lead. And if some of them follow you, that's what we want. Most of them will not. They will not even understand you. They will hate you more. They will, um, they will isolate you. So it's better to actually focus on your inner vision that has been supplied by God and you must heed to it and whenever you don't immediately you will receive pain immediately so you have to be listening to that inner voice and it's not you it's God it's the universe speaking to you of what you should be you think those visions are not supplied from above I learned this from Wes Watson but it's so true and it's in our heart to go towards that, to go towards the light, especially if we're not lost. I'm in hell right now, in a sense, and I could go towards a lot more darkness, but I choose light, I choose God, I choose life. I don't wanna dance with the devil forever. Neither should you. Conscious congruent living brings clarity to confusion. Done.